here. Well, I'm here with my good buddies, Ken McElroy and Jeff Snyder. And I was just telling the guys that every single time I talk to Kenny, he's telling me what it's like to deal with these banks daily. So I wanted to connect these two guys and I wanted Kenny to download and tell Jeff exactly what he's experiencing. And then Jeff can kind of interpret this through the lens of what he's seeing with all these curves, interest rate curves with the regional banks and of course the bigger picture with the global monetary system. So Kenny, do you want to start off by just kind of explaining to Jeff what you're dealing with daily here? Certainly, of course. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Always great seeing you. Uh, so a couple things. One, uh, so we own about $2 billion worth of real estate and we're, we currently have six projects in construction. Uh, we are, we're buying several. Uh, these are mostly multifamily. And I'm actually buying a company and we're in the middle of refinances and all kinds of stuff. So, you know, what we do is we package limited partner investors, high net worth people into deals. Um, and so I wanted to start there, George, because one of the things that's happened in the last two years or 18 months, I guess, is you think about when you when I was just trying to attract capital, this is uh, like equity. Um, I was able to do it at five, six percent. Well, now you can't. Because, you know, so, you know, so equity is repriced. Yeah. They can get a T-bill for five, six percent. Right. So they're not going to give me money and put it in a real estate deal. So, so that's changed the, the, the equity landscape a lot. And then, of course, on the debt side, um, that's changed a lot. And so, so debt's gone up. And typically debt is priced, obviously, a little bit less than equity. So when debt, because debt is in first position on all these on all these deals, so when debt is let's say seven today, that means equity needs to be at least two to three points higher. So that's affecting cap rates. Uh, the cap rates are going up, values are going down. So so specifically on the commercial side, what we're what we're seeing is um, values are 20, 30 percent lower. For you know, certainly multifamily, industrial, retail, the lenders, what they're doing with, with guys like me that have been sponsors of you know thirty years doing this, is they're making us put more money down on reserves, and we're we're like fifty five percent loan to value. So Jeff, now that you've heard that, I'm sure that doesn't surprise you, but it's information like boots on the ground information that you didn't have earlier. So what's your impression of what Kenny just said? Well, there's a couple things. And George, you raised this earlier when you said, you know, we should talk to Kenny about this is number one, I think most people, myself included, when we talk about trouble in the, in the commercial real estate sector, it's like, you know, office buildings and retail properties, because that's where most of the focus is. And when you said, no, 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 Kenny's talking about multifamily projects. It's like, that was sort of a shock because multifamily from the outside appears to be perfectly fine, or at least the the cleanest dirty shirt in the commercial real estate laundry laundry bucket. So the fact that you're talking about this stuff going on with multifamily real estate is that's eye opening already right from right from the get go here. The second thing is um, when you hear about you know something like tightening lending standards, what does that actually mean? And Kenny, right. you're, you're basically explaining it here. Tightening lending standards means a lot of different things, but if it means you got to come to a deal with extra cash or extra equity. That's a tightening lending standard that has massive implications further down the road. So, you know, from my perspective, you hear about, you know, data like SLUS that tells us that, you know, banks are saying they're tightening lending standards. Okay, well, what does that actually mean? And it can mean a bunch of things. But if, if Kenny, what you're saying, and I have no reason to doubt why, why or, you know, what you are saying, the banks are saying, you know, low to, loan to value ratios are going way down. That's a huge one. I mean, especially for multifamily real estate, that's, that's another big one. And I think to me, what the, the biggest thing I'm hearing from you guys is that banks are being incredibly defensive here, right? Uh, which is a really bad sign because we haven't really seen anything bad happen yet. It's almost as if like the banks are saying, we don't expect this to go well. So we're going to build up our cushions, whether it be a, a, you know, a cash cushion or an interest rate cushion or a valuation cushion. And we're going to force that on to the borrowers, especially as they come looking for refinancing or loans. So really what the banks are saying is we realize these people are going to walk away from these deals. So we got to get the best terms we can, knowing that once the defaults start, we got to be protected from the, from, from that, that uh, behavior. And, you know, again, George, we see this type of behavior in crisis too, where banks become defensive. And they also become very narrow focused on 
just their own portfolios. They don't take a, a bigger picture look at the tighter they get in lending standards, the more they demand from their borrowers, the more likely it is their borrowers are going to have to default. But right. if they get this tunnel vision on, okay, we just need to make sure that we get the you know minimum standards. We got to get uh, everything above a, a certain level or a certain cushion just to make sure that you know when the default actually happens. They're, they've gone right, they've gone beyond thinking that defaults might happen to, okay, when they do, what are we going to do about it? So Kenny, how is this impacting your process when you're calculating what you're willing to pay for a deal? Yeah, well, a couple of things. One, every single week we have an investment committee and there's seven people on it. And we look at hundreds of deals a week and we've been offering, offering, offering for the last two years. And I don't know if you know, George, but I only bought two in two years. And I always stick to my math. You know, I've been around this business enough to know that it's got a cash flow on day one. Uh, you know, uh, uh, because things happen. So um, now I'm licking my chops because, say, you know, same program, same stuff. We're seeing now distressed sellers. Uh, we're seeing uh, sellers put their, uh, we're selling sellers pull, the, pull their properties off the market because they thought they were worth more. And then they wait uh, and the rates just kept going up. And so they're like, now they're coming back with lower rates. And, and so there's a lot of brokers trying to do what they call brokers' opinions of value on, you know, repricing stuff and, and they're, they're seeing it go down, 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 down. And that is because um, we haven't even touched on, um, you know, operating expenses from all this inflationary stuff is just nuts. So our, our, our insurance premiums are up 30%. Now property taxes are up, utilities are up. So now that might not seem a lot, but on my little company, that's um, our premiums are 4 million. So that's a $1.2 million hit and just, just with me. So, uh, you know, these are, these are, then, you know, rents are not going up to cover that. So, so, you know, we're, you know, things are all kinds of stuff are happening. And so, so I'm always trying to solve on the cash flow that I can make from the, from the property. And so as those things start to squeeze down cash flow, you offer less period. Yeah. You have to offer less to, to maintain returns. Um, and then I'll tell you another sleeper in there is construction. You know, so if I started stuff, I, I you know, we're, we're building you know, two years ago. Now, two years ago, construction loans were four, let's say, you know, and, um, you know, my, my costs were what they were. Well, costs went up and, you know, now construction debt is eight, nine percent. I even heard as, as high as 10 in some cases. So and not fixed. So so now you're so you're seeing these people finish their projects if they can, they have to get additional funding for sure. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, there's going to be a big gap. There's a massive supply problem coming. It's going to hit in 25, probably 26. Uh, you know, we're severely undersupplied with, with housing and, um, yeah, but we're also undersupplied when it comes to income. Yeah, I know. That, I know. That, that's what that, that's where rubber meets the road because I hear that argument all the time. Well, George, you know, housing prices are just going to go up forever. Because, or rentals, because there's this big gap, you know, rental price, or excuse me, home prices up here, rentals here. So the rental uh, prices have to go up to the home prices or the equivalent amount of what a mortgage payment. I'd say, listen, that's assuming that, that the average John Jane is not constrained by income. Income's and I've got news for you. They, they actually are constrained by income, believe it or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a big thing, right, Kenny? I mean, the other stuff is important, but if the incomes are, are topped out or if, if there's a ceiling on them, it, it filters down into everything else. It makes every it makes life more difficult for the banks, makes more life more difficult for you. I mean, you got to make the numbers work. And if you've got no no real ability to pass along costs to your customers, I mean, geez, that's another thing. That's right. Thing. So when we look at these apartment owners that have multiple, multiple properties, how much money are they as far as the total? How much of the pie chart are they getting from debt? And then out of that, how much are they getting from banks? And then how much are they just getting from like a private equity, like a non-bank entity, like a shadow bank, if you will? Sure. So uh, I would say the the best right now, uh, most of our stuff is agency. So Freddie Fannie would be primarily where we're going for most of our stuff. And that was an incredible conversation. Uh, guys, if you want to follow what Jeff and Kenny are doing, Jeff, where can they find you? It's Eurodollar University. All right. And Kenny? Yeah, KenMacroy.com. Just check it out. All right, guys. Appreciate your time. Can't wait to do it again. Yeah, yeah see you, George. Jeff, thanks. Yeah. Good seeing you guys.